Well, I think the phrase that sums it up is their advertising phrase, which is a place for everything and everything in its place. And the idea was that the successful businessman could have everything within reach. Sitting at his desk, everything was right there. All of that thanks to a remarkable piece of furniture manufactured by Indiana's own Wooten Desk Company. They were part of a larger movement towards what's called patent furniture. If you had a patent, not only did that protect your property legally, but it also signaled to the public again that this was something that was new. It was the latest, and it really was a modern device. By 1874, William Wooten had two patented desk designs. One was the rotary desk, but the one that made the company's name was a tall, drop-front model officially titled Wooten's Patent Cabinet Office Secretary. A hit at the 1876 Philadelphia Centennial Exposition, the desk was soon being advertised under a decidedly more marketable moniker. The king of desks was probably the other slogan that you see the most, and, and as far as I know, that was the company's things. Um, you do have some competitors coming up with the queen of desks, which is kind of interesting. Quite a few prominent people had them. People like Jay Gould, um, Rockefeller, you know, these titans of industry, and they're not purchasing them because that is the most efficient way to run their giant enterprises. It's because it says something about your taste, it says something about your importance, and that you are here to stay and that you have this level of prestige. But they certainly weren't all show. The compartments, more than 100 in all, served a clear purpose. We have quartermaster desks here in the collection, some of which are quite crude, are essentially almost fruit crates, that the cubbies design, they're sized for the way that documents were folded and labeled and filed. The Wooten, although much more elaborate, was really no different. That may look a little quaint to us today, but that really was the standard for filing an organization in an office at the time. They actually made a ladies' version as well, though presumably this was for her to run her home. Again, with those Victorian virtues of efficiency and organization. Really, the last desks are probably produced about 1897. By then, the whole way that filing takes place, the whole organization of the office are changing. So they just essentially outlive both their usefulness and their stylishness. We have several wooden desks in the collection. Our desks are from the period when the company was in Indianapolis. And then we have a lady secretary, which is much rarer. And it has lighter woods. They all have this combination of you know, usually walnut, though they were also made in oak, with burled wood panels, very typical of the Renaissance revival design that's really at the heart of the, the wooden desk design. On view in our second floor galleries, we have what is sometimes known as the winged griffin desk, which is a superior grade, and it's, there are only a handful of superior grade wooden secretaries that are known to exist. And this one, the griffin design, appears in Wooden's 1876 catalog and really looks like an exposition piece. It is absolutely fantastic and was meant to demonstrate the extremely high quality of work that could be done should you choose to, to pay for it. We have several what we call centers of excellence. Those are areas where we have particular depth in the collection and in our expertise. And one of those is Indiana innovation in industry and agriculture, especially reflecting that post-Civil War period. And the wooden desks are such a great example of that, as well as, again, this whole surround of other manufacturers who were working, um, trying to figure out the same kinds of, of questions, and really were quite popular and quite visible for their time. So there are a lot of things that we can learn from those desks, a lot of great stories from the whole innovation in manufacturing to just what it says about how businesses were run and, and what people valued.